Flowers, you guys having fun at Spook Hour? That doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. That sounds like, like kind of just hanging out. I said, are you guys having fun at Spook Hour? All right, we've got a panelist coming up that I've been looking forward to for a very long time to talk to, but I want to give you guys a couple of very quick ground rules for when we do these panels. We have an open mic up here. We'll have you line up if you have a question to ask. We'll get to you as soon as possible. It's one question, it's not a monologue, it's not a back and forth just because we want to get to the, uh, the questions. The other thing that's very important for legal reasons, for things like that, you might want to come to the mic and you might want to ask things about, say, a show called Jackass. Don't. Okay? Um, I know that, uh, that that's something that is probably what this guy's most known for, but we want to make sure that that's not what we talk about. Let's make sure this is a positive, fun panel. I think we all know how to do that. That's what we've done all weekend, right? Something that's actually really cool you don't with Spookal. What was the, the impetus? 
images for you doing the uh, the custom skateboard decks with Deej and Spookala. I mean, we've got, what, two different ones that you guys have done so far? Yeah, when we went to Ocala, Spookala, um, somebody printed some limited edition decks, and because they were so original and limited, um, we sold right out of them, so we're like, let's do that again in a different colorway when we get to Tampa. So, I mean, the more Spookalas, we'll keep doing different original kinds. It seems to be successful. Now that I'm back to skating again, I took like nearly a decade hiatus for being too, too, too drunk. I got out of rehab at 250 pounds. Everybody's like, yo, babe, you want to go skate? I'm like, hell no. That's like Nigel nice. Houston holding 230-pound weights in his hand trying to kick flip the pyramid. Not only is it frustrating, it's impossible. So no, I don't want to go skate. Then I started hiking up a mountain with this shaman eight, eight miles a day at 5 a.m. And within two months of doing that every day, I dropped down to 200. So, um. And then my girlfriend cheers on her. She's a stretch coach. And uh, I have not, I, I did not know that skater, I think all professional skateboarders need a stretch coach because in 2013, the doctor said my legs were too dehydrated from alcohol abuse and basically good luck trying to skateboard again. So that just made me want to drink more. So she goes, don't listen to that idiot. I want to stretch you an hour every day and then you'll get your legs back. Now they're back minus the torn MCL and ACL. An hour? stretching a day, but I agree with you guys that as any kind of athlete, if you're not stretching, you are asking for trouble. I'm dealing with a pulled hamstring right now for the very same reason. So check this out. When the doctor told me that in 2013, he goes, just reach down to touch your toes and see if you can do it. I reach down and it goes pop right here and pop my hamstring. I was out for a year. I would even be in traffic for like 20 minutes and I'd be like, I gotta pull over. I gotta walk this off. It hurts too bad. And uh, pop on your hamstring is probably one of the most painful things. It feels like somebody shoots you in the back of the leg with a gun. hundred percent. So you have that to you Absolutely. Right now. I did it on the soccer field in front of a varsity high school match. Pop my hamstring face first in the dirt. And nobody moved because I think everybody was like, that poor referee. This is embarrassing. Let's just act like he didn't, like he just didn't fall down. Then you realize, maybe he's actually hurt. And it takes eternity to heal. I have somebody message me after. They're like, hey man, I've got a friend you on Facebook. I've got a video of this. Do you want to see this? Hell yes, I want to see this. I want to see what this looks like. So minus that, if you break your ribs, it's terrible because if you cough, you feel like you're breaking it. If you sneeze, you basically are breaking it. You can't put a cast on it. You can ice it. That might help a little bit, but God forbid you play me a romantic comedy. It is torture. You're like, ah, 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 ah. And then breaking your tailbone, I'm on a flight actually from Tampa to Philadelphia, sitting first class next to this businessman like this. I'm like, I swear I'm not gay. I got a broken ass tailbone. You're going to have to deal with it. He's like, you're a bad I Do whatever you want, people. <laughs> We're going to go to this next question. Then we're going to come back to these injuries because this is a fun discussion. Hi, my name is Amanda. It's really good to see you, Bam. It's really nice to see you. Um, so, a two part question then. So, you just mentioned rom coms making me laugh. What is your favorite romantic comedy? I need to know now. You brought it up. Oh, favorite romantic comedy? Um... It was actually, we just saw it. It was it was Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston. I know that they always, or no, Drew Barrymore, I'm sorry, but uh, they're in Hawaii or something. I forget. 50 First Dates? That, yeah, yeah there you go. we're That's laughing good. at that one. Hi, I'm Tom. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, my, my serious question to you is uh, with fan encounters over, you know, the last couple of years, I'm sure that's been very meaningful to you, but what's been your favorite fan encounter over the last few years? Favorite fan encounter was actually at the Denver airport on a layover just recently. It was this black dude with sunglasses walking by who double takes me and goes, asshole. I'm like, me? He's like, asshole? Like a question. I'm like, do you mean jackass? He's like, yeah, yeah I love that shit. <laughs> Thing. Clearly, as you just went through the five-minute medieval scroll of injuries that you've had, um, many of the injuries, without naming where they could have come from, many of the injuries that you've uh, that you've encountered have probably happened on camera. Yeah. Um, so when you go back and you see these injuries on camera, are there any you're like, ooh, that looks a lot worse than than it felt, or the vice versa? You're like, oh man, that thing hurt so bad, and you see the video, you're like, dude, that doesn't look like much. I'm gonna say vice versa because the older, I think the older you get, the, the harder it hurts. So I looked. 
doctored footage of me when I was 16. I did a nollie lip slide down a 13 stair rail, missed the nollie, racked my nuts, and then slid on my face. That sucked real bad. But on a three foot mini ramp, which was two years ago when I was 250 pounds, I was fresh out of rehab. I just tried to do a pop shove it, no slaw, a reaver. And whoever was there waxed to coping like a fucking iceberg because I slipped out on three feet this high and I go, <laughs> Instead of my elbow with the bones to get out, my elbow still won't go straight and broke my wrist for the 15th time. So that hurt real bad, and it was just a ramp this big, not a 13 stair handrail. All right, so, uh, so, you, so you mentioned getting out of rehab, and you've been in, in good shape since August. Yes, and uh, as you guys know, if you don't know what the Florida shuffle is, it means that if the interventionalist knows that you have good insurance, they will find ways to keep you there for eternity. So cheers to me, I have the Guinness Book of World Records of longest fucking Florida shuffle. <laughs> Two years, 13 different rehabs, back to back at 90 days apiece. Poison cocksucker, Steve Timmer. <laughs> Alright, so, <laughs> so, because this is 90 days I have to do for a banger act, so I would make it 88 days, and I'm like, oh, I'm getting out in two days. You don't walk in and be like, you've been walking those same jeans for like three days now. I'm like, yeah, I'm not trying to get a pussy in here. I don't care. It's like, that's bad hygiene. You're doing another 90 days in another place. Then I do another 88 days, and then I flick the cigarette out into a bush. He filmed the cigarette smoking like any cigarette would. It was not on fire. He's like, you could have lit the whole Cali National Forest on fire. You're doing another 90 days. I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> $650,000 later, $1,300 a night for 220, no, two years and 200 days. <laughs> All right, so you said you've been out since August. What, what was the difference? What changed in you? What was the switch that flipped to be like, I'm getting out and I'm not going back in? Well, the thing is, like, when, when a family or friends intervene somebody and they sabotage you, like, they would say, hey, man, we know Ruth Chris Steakhouse is your favorite restaurant. You want to meet up there and have friends with her? I'm like, yeah, sure, that sounds like fun. It's not a dinner. It's everybody sitting around a table intervening me and forcing me to go. And at that point, I'm already pissed. So, like, going to all these classes, learning that alcohol's bad, it's not any good. I'm very aware of that. But what am I going to what am I gonna do when I get out? I'm going to sip on a white cloth because fuck all y'all. So I was already bitter. You know, like, you, you have to want to go in on your own. And you can't be forced in by your parents or your girlfriend. You ain't going to work. You have to want it. So did you want it when you got when it got to August first? Like I really want to get on. I want to be. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, like every goal that I set when I was younger happened before my deadline. So if I wanted to be a pro skater, you know, I'm like I hope I turn pro by 20. I was pro by 16. I want to be on the cover of Thrasher. I got it instantly. I want a red Ferrari. Tony Hawk bought me one when I was 15. I didn't even get to drive it yet because you have to be 16 to have your license. So after I was 25, I was like, I have ran out. I don't have any more wishes. I'm just gonna, because I didn't drink, I didn't party at all in high school. I would always get invited to these high school things and I would just go skateboarding in Philadelphia instead. So when I turned 25, I'm like, now I'm gonna. So when I was married at the time to Missy, she's like, you wanna do ecstasy? I did that shit in high school. I don't wanna do that. Well, I'm like, why do? I never have. So I was a late bloomer. And then now that Danny, my girlfriend, got my legs back, thanks to her being a stretch coach, I have my passion back to skateboard, which is what I needed all along. And I also needed structure because I wake up now, I walk the dogs, she stretches me for an hour, I go find a skate spot, I can't leave the spot unless I get a photo or a trick. You know, I have a very fun, structured schedule now. Before, boredom is what made me, I would, I would be bored and I would look across the street, I'd see an Irish pub, I'd go, that looks like fun. I do that all day until I'm fucking drunk by 11. So what you're saying is your girlfriend's Danny out here in the audience right now? Maybe. Yeah, it's right there. All right, so Danny's been here. So why don't we all give Danny a round of applause? Because it basically sounds like without her, Bam might not be up here right now because she sounds like she's helping give you some structure. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah. And, so, I mean, you know, they have masseuses at the X Games and stuff, which is effective, you know, but like stretching is way more effective than getting a massage when it comes to skateboarding. And believe it or not, pro golfers are the ones that tweak their back out the most. You know, all of our clients were professional golfers. <laughs> So, so what other, so what other kind words do you want to say about the impact that she's had on your life? I'm trying to get you some possible. Well, she gave me the ultimate ultimatum: her puts water, the vodka. I was like, shit, I really like vodka, but I'm gonna go for the first option. And I'm like, and what happens if I do? Then she would 
She cut it off throwing the river. I know if I have to find it like John Bob, it ain't worth it. <laughs> well then, okay. <laughs> All right, so again, without getting into specifics of where, so what made you decide that you want, you know what, I think I want to be a stuntman. I think I want to go do crazy stuff other than just skateboarding. I think I want to do other things besides just skating. Yeah, I mean, that's how... CKY, I made that when I was 16 and it sold a million copies just through word of mouth. I never put an ad out at all. I wanted to do professional skateboard video mixed with funny stunts, like getting into a shopping cart and getting pushed full speed into a pricker bush, you know? Just to mix it up a bit. And when I played that to my uncle who works in an auto body shop, he came over with all of his like buddies. And they were laughing their ass off. I'm like, wow, this video is not just for skateboarders. Other people like it too. Because a skate video is just nothing but gnarly skate trick, gnarly skate trick, gnarly skate trick. And if you're not a skater, you get pretty bored. You know, so I mixed it up. And that's when Jeff Tremaine and Spike Jones from Jackass, it wasn't Jackass yet. They called me from MTV and said, we're making a pilot called Jackass. Can we use your footage from CKY to create it? And I said, yes. And then like a light switch overnight, it was like a really big show. All right, so uh, there's been some times where some people in your family might have been uh, involved in some of these crazy stunts with you. Yeah. So uh, most of us in here, I, I can't see me go with like my, my mom and dad and be like, hey, we're gonna do some crazy stuff and I'm gonna prank you like that. How did you get them to go in on this with you? Oh, uh, well, I mean, when Or they, did they ever go in on it with you? They didn't know that I was pulling pranks on them and my mom was very angry in the beginning, but after doing 65 episodes of Viva La Bam, she slowly realized that, you know, if I, Wreck, like get her a fender bender in her car she knows that mtv will eventually fix it but you know it's funny i was driving down the street with danny in, in pennsylvania and, and it says like daniel boone stayed here once i'm like what do you fucking do castle bam should be a historical landmark i had slayer play the grand opening day i moved in iggy pop's been in there tony hawk i've had every band recording in there as far as clutch kills Engage and I have Prince's soundboard for Purple Fucking Rain. So that is a historical landmark of music and skateboarding. Daniel Boone, what do you do? Float down a river? <laughs> oh. Alright, okay, hey, if there's anybody's got any questions, just feel free to come up here and ask the questions again. You can see, we could probably do this all day. Alright? If you got any questions, just get up on the bring the mic and let's ask the questions. Alright, so, uh, I just had a freaking brain fart right there. <laughs> you know what, but I see we got a guy coming up here. Let's, uh, let's, let's let him go up to the mic. I don't remember what the heck I was going to say. <laughs> Alright, what's going on, man? What's your name, man? My name is Glenn. Glenn, how you doing? What's your question for Bam? First off, hi, Bam. Hi. Um, my question is, whenever we look back at like, the Jackass years, what is one skit you can look back and just uncontrollably laugh at? Now, are we allowed to answer that? Yeah, yeah. Are we, we, are we allowed yeah. to answer that? <laughs> Okay, so with, with Jackass, there's a lot of things that we filmed that simply couldn't make it to television, whether it's too repeatable, too dangerous, or whatever, but um, one time, Dave England was on Venice Beach, and he had one of those canvas things, you know, walk by, I'll draw you for 10 bucks or whatever, so this 80-year-old lady pays the money to should have her face drawn, only for him to reveal her naked and says slut. She's just, oh my god, you need church. It was so awful but funny. And the MTV was like, yep, we will never play this. <laughs> Little things like that. And, you know, Knoxville um, had a jail outfit on handcuffed and he walked into like an Ace Hardware, grabbed some saw and started sawing it. And then somebody must have made a phone call that there's an escapee on the loose, but all these cop cars pulled up and the rookie cop didn't put the car in drive, so it just floated, or didn't put it in park, so it just floated into a pole and like, we got really in trouble for that. Definitely can't show it. <laughs> all right, thanks a lot, man. That was a good question. All right, next up. What's your real world name that's not Elvira? My name's Felicia. Hello, Felicia. I am. So yesterday I went to Tampa Pro. I didn't know if you stopped by and saw any of the Yeah, guys. I was there for the bowl. You were there for the bowl? Awesome. Yeah, I went there for boards for bros and like and not skateboards and stuff with kids and it was pretty cool. Nice. I just wanted to know if you went to the local school. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I can tell you something that's actually really cool about Bam. So, but you were in Ocala, you went 
when you did uh, the Ocala, the, the Spicala pop-up, didn't you go to the local skate park and just go, go around to the skate park for a little bit just in Ocala? Y yeah, whenever I do find a new skate park, whether it's good or bad, uh, I go anyway, but that one happens to be phenomenal. I remember that one. That's good. Really remember the Ocala, really let's go. Yeah, Ocala right. has a good park. So does Sarasota. Alright, so how coming up? Hello, what's your name? Lizzie. Lizzie, um, what's your question for me? So, I, first off, Eagle Van was my favorite show as a kid. Thanks. And you got me into one of my favorite bands in the world, his Infernal Majesty. So, yeah. I'm wondering, what is your favorite hymn song, and do you still kind of hang out with Billy? Yeah, I saw Villa Vallo at, um, on his tour. It was in, right outside of Allentown, Pennsylvania. And, um, man, favorite hymn song. I can listen to the whole album of Razor Blade Romance once a day. Yeah. But, if I have to say, I like For You a lot, um, the older stuff mainly, but I, I love it all. Awesome, thank you. Alright, coming up here. There's a bug, sorry. Hi what? Bam, I'm Lala. I was going to ask the same question. As a fellow hymn lover, um, you're the reason like why I got into that band, I have a hymn tattoo. So I guess, what is your second favorite hymn song? Set, well, I can tell you this, um, I like to discover new bands and I fly all over the place to find them and that's how I brought him to, uh, from Finland to America, but there's this band called Amor Ad Lunum, which means to love a woman and it's really, really good, it sounds like him and 69 Eyes, but they're from Puerto Rico, believe it or not, and uh, I'm going to meet them to record a song with them. Amor Ad Lunum and this band called Lacrimus Profunde from Austria has what it takes. Yeah, that's who I'm listening to these days. Hey, so I'm gonna follow up here. So first, what do you, what do you have? Uh, come on back real quick. So do you have like the hymn logo tattooed on you? Or is that something from a song? So, oh, the hardogram, yeah. Actually, I have a low-key hymn tattoo. So it's a Grim Reaper, and it says Death is in Love with Us. Oh yeah, like, it's one of those. That's track 11 on Razor Blade Romance. It's my favorite song, and I'm like, yeah, I need that on my body immediately. So that's awesome. the one that stuck with me the most. Very cool, very cool. Thank you. All right, next up, come on up here to the mic. Hi, Bam, I'm Jess, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm an old school CKY2K fan, still know the Deco, Deco rap by heart, <laughs> like many of my friends do. Chinese food style. Um, question for you, I apologize if this has been asked multiple times, but I'd love to know the logistics of you guys getting an alligator, being a Florida girl. How did you get an alligator into your parents' home and get it out? <laughs> so, um, with Viva La Bam, we had a budget of $300,000 for 65 weeks to blow shit up, fly people in, fly people out, etc. So I wanted to scare my mom with having an alligator in the kitchen and we found one in the Poconos in northern Pennsylvania. We, it was about, I think it was about 10 grand to, to get it for a day or two. But when we ordered the elephant, that was from Connecticut and we weren't ready when it arrived. It was $13,000 So thirteen thousand dollars times two. That's how much an elephant costs. That's that. a commitment right there. <laughs> Can you imagine being that Walmart manager? Hey, so we want to know if we can uh, park an elephant in your parking lot overnight. Can we get approval for this? <laughs> that is incredible. All right, next up, coming up here to the mic. So we did a Viva La Bam. I got them a limousine and a fully paid vacation to Atlantic City thinking, you know, like, what a great son, you know? No, that was just to get them out of there so we could turn the whole entire indoor and outdoor part of the house a skate park and have a contest with Tony Hawk. So, uh, you know, they came back not aware of anything. I painted the entire kitchen blue. We always find ways to have them not know because we had like a team of 40 people, you know, whether you're a camera You know, not get sabotaged. <laughs> All right, so so hold on just one second. So you got them out of the house. 
and completely redid the whole house. And when they came back, what was the first thing that they said to you? Was it on camera? Was it off camera? When was when did they stop cursing at you? How did they stop cursing at you? For this? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think my my mom cursed um, my whole life until until I started screwing with her on MTV. <laughs> she was getting so fed up uh, the first time. She said the F word. <laughs> now she says it a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. That was a great question. All right, coming up here. How you doing, man? What's your name? My name's Nate, man. How you doing? What's up, man? How you doing? I met you over there. I met you in Sarasota. Before we were both sober, I drank a beer with you at a gas station in Sarasota. <laughs> I was probably escaping a rehab. <laughs> I, think it, I think it was a lot of the wall. Sober, like I told you, um, 100 days in two days. That's awesome. Congratulations. Oh, um, my question for you is: uh, Are you gonna get back into movie making? Obviously not like Jackass, but my legit movie of all time, favorite, still to this day, is Crying. Yeah, I mean the, the the hardest part about me being in a movie is that every movie that I've been in, I always played man. You know, like so. I feel like me playing a police officer in a serious movie would be ridiculous, you know? Like, people wouldn't take it seriously. So it all, it all depends on what the role is and whether I would know if I would do a good job on it or not. But right now, um, you know, I, I've really been enjoying traveling, doing these Bukala type things because, you know, I meet the fans, sign stuff, and when I'm done, I get to go skateboard and, you know, meet friends that uh, I haven't seen in a while because no matter if I'm in Indianapolis or fucking the Philippines, I have friends everywhere for I have been to every country in the world and I know the capital of all of them, I can't be stumped. Thank you very much, guys. Can't be stumped, huh? So Azerbaijan? Baku. Look at that. Oh my goodness. That's, that's pretty good stuff. Give right me more. There. Anybody. Give me a country or a state. I'll tell you. Tajikistan. Tajikistan. Tashkent. All right. This is this is freaking me out here, man. This is good <laughs> stuff. All right. All right. You know what? I'm going to let this guy come up here and ask a question. What's your name, my man? Actually, I went on David Letterman, and uh, he found out that I knew the Capitol, so he gave me a 20 um, quiz, and I got them all right. That's and incredible. I thought the last one, New Zealand, was awesome. But I said, that's the bigger city, it's Wellington. And Edward Norton sitting right next to me. He's like, I just came back from New Zealand filming a movie. He's right, and it's Wellington. That's, like, that's, that's pretty shit. incredible. That's pretty incredible. Hi, right, my man, what's your name? I'm Jay Paul. So this question is relating skateboarding and more for man. Yeah. Um, being that with skating, you know, a lot of injuries, a lot of them visible, a lot of them not visible, which can sometimes be the worst you just forget about them. Regarding horror, what is your favorite kill that you've seen in all the horror movies, and who's the favorite person you've met doing these conventions now? All right, so favorite kill in horror movies, and then the second part is, what's your favorite person you've met that's not the host you're on the stage with right now at these horror conventions, right? That's what you said. I heard you say it. No. <laughs> well, you know, like, when I was younger, I'd watch, like, Freddy Krueger and Jason and all that, and it would scare the shit out of me, but... I seen them in a while and I, I feel like if I did watch them I don't know if I would be scared anymore is what scares me is like you know um, those like orphan things like that like a real life situation you know you get this Russian girl that you think is eight to take care of you find out that she's really 40 and her agenda is to you know that that shit is real life shit that's terrifying you know I don't know if uh, you know me being scared of like Chucky anymore would, would do anything but yeah I'll, I do like slasher movies as well Darren Miller from CKY really got me into that that's why most of the music videos that I directed with CKY are always horror related alright so who's your favorite person that you met at these shows was the second part of this uh, I'm doing the convention scene I, I like Skeet Ulrich uh, we always do these things and um Juliette Lewis, I've known since I was like 15, but um, she did one at home. Um, and uh, Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold is. <laughs> I hang out with him in the green room a lot. That dude is a wild David Arquette. Cat. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Arnold's a wild dude. <laughs> but um, <laughs> maybe I should. Alright, don't tell me that one happened. No, don't tell my account. Go ahead. Hi, what's your name? My name's Tristan. First time caller. Um, I just want to know out of all the slashers, who do you think you could take in a fight? Who do you think you could take in a fight out of all the 
the slasher. So she's saying you probably can only take one. The rest would butcher you mercilessly. But who's the one you might be able to actually take? I probably can't take any of them. I, I, <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, the problem is I like getting beat up. I get my adrenaline flowing like I landed a skate trick again. So I like it. <laughs> well, but you've got your legs stretched so you can run. So could you outrun any of them? Ooh, man, I'm going to kick your ass good. I can't wait. I'll get my adrenaline flowing. <laughs> Hilarious. That's hilarious. Look, when you fall on a skateboard all day, getting your ass kicked by a fist is nothing. <laughs> you know, dude, man, what are you No, getting knocked out is fun. I got hit in the head with a baseball bat by an eight-year-old lady in Westchester because we had an argument about me owning a nightclub and being too noisy. So she hit me over the head with a baseball bat. I wake up to the ambulance and police everywhere, and I'm in a pool of blood on the street. And uh, everybody's like, yo, man, how did that feel? That must have hurt. Short-term memory's gone. You're just like, why am I on the ground? Well, done. How'd that feel? Don't know. <laughs> All right, next up. What's your name? I'm not a couple. Uh, you can pull the mic down. So you can, you, there you go. So what's your name again? Yes. Um, so since you said you like getting your ass beat. Come up to the mic a little bit. Since you must say you like getting your ass beat, which slasher or horror icon would you like to get your ass beat by? Oh, that's a better one. Which is the one that you would like? You'd like to get your ass beat. Which horror icon would you like to get your ass beat by the most? You know, um, <laughs> well, they, they usually come with a knife and shit, so I'd be pretty screwed. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, you know what? I'm, I'm a big Mike Tyson fan. I would let him kick my ass for sure. <laughs> I actually, you know, come up with ideas on, mostly when I was on airplanes, because I'm always on, I'm sipping on a red wine, coming up with ideas. I actually pitched this to Paramount. I'm like, you know, if Andrew Holyfield got his ear bent off by Mike Tyson, how about we do the Evander Holyfield redemption where I get into a boxing ring with him and he bites off my ear and they're like, you're willing to do that? I'm like, fuck it. Yeah. You know the street creds I'll have with a missing ass ear and people say, how did you lose that? Evander Holyfield bit it off. Like, we asked him and uh, he turned down the offer. <laughs> so Mike Tyson's so gonna, have. Mike Tyson's gonna be fighting Jake Paul soon. Do you think that uh, Jake Paul's got any chance? Do you think Mike Tyson's gonna beat him into a bloody pulp? Either way, it's gonna be awesome because it's getting Mike Tyson back to his roots and in shape again. So to me, it doesn't really matter who wins or loses. The fact that he's getting in shape for this is all that matters to me. And he's doing, he's back to doing what he loves. And watching him knock people out when I was younger was incredible. So cheers on him. Cheers on the both of them. All right, so earlier on in this panel, you said that when you hit 25, you felt like you had reached all your goals in life. Now you say you're 44, do you feel like you've found some new goals, some new things that you want to attain? And if so, what are those goals? Yeah, you know what, it actually took me being in the two years of the longest Florida shuffle to, it, it actually made me realize how much shit I was taking for granted because as soon as I got out, see I didn't have the internet, I didn't have music, I didn't have a lot of things. Uh, no, no phone calls, maybe 15 minutes if I'm lucky. But when I got out, I'm like, I'm in a car, it's a convertible. I'm listening to music and there's the beach and now I'm talking to a pal at Starbucks outside under an umbrella, fuck yeah. <laughs> it made me reappreciate everything again. So, in a way, you know, I, maybe I had to go through that to um, get back to, you know, cleaning up my act and skating again and finding out, you know, what, what things I love. Because at one point, I didn't think I loved anything anymore, you know? <laughs> So like I said, do you have more uh, more goals? Like, hey, by the time I reach 49, I want to be doing this. Or I yeah, wanna, I, 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 I got the passion about? back again. Um, you know, especially for, you know, I got her as eye candy around me 24-7, and we do everything together, and that's motivation enough. That's 100% motivation. So yes, all the time, you know, I would have like a guardian and light up like Britney Spears. We really want you to do good. Well, what do I get out of it? You know, like, I don't care. No, I need the ultimatum. And she gave me one. <laughs> That's good stuff right there. So, the vibe. so you said you've had some bands in there to be able to, uh, to record. Are there any bands or any styles that you have not explored that you would like to explore recording? Well, that's the thing. Music, uh, I mean, 
there's even country songs that are using 808s, which is like dope rap beats to countries, and it's it's starting to work. You know, before I think Kevin Fiedler tried to do like a rappy rock and roll song, and it just did not work. But you know, they're starting to figure out tactics that you know you can use an orchestrated violin, fucking classical music to death metal if you do it right. Uh, absolutely, that's yeah. that's literally my jam right there, man. I'm and music is everything. When I'm skating, I need to hear the right things to get me motivated to land it. You know. Um, so yeah, and, and you usually take a year to work on a video part that lasts three minutes, which is equal to a, a song. So you, you pick your song to the, all the hard skate tricks that you've done, and if your song sucks, then the video part sucks. It doesn't matter how hard are the tricks that you tried to do. If I don't want to hear the song and it doesn't go to the video part, turn it off or turn down the volume because music is 50% of watching a skate video. You have to have good music. So would you like to record some of that orchestral death metal? Would you like to record some pop country music? Would you like to do something in those wild genres? Or, or do you want to kind of stick down your, your hymn, uh, that kind of rock? Um, I, well, I like jokey songs, too. I really like the Bloodhound Gang. They're my neighbors, and they did that hit song, You and Me, Baby Ain't Nothing But Mammals, so let's do it like they do on the... So they're my neighbors, and uh, there's always recorded, but they do some funny-ass songs, and... Uh, you know, sometimes you gotta switch it up from hearing such serious stuff. But if you listen to pop music, it's just so simple. Like, I like songs with messages, like an important message. When, when I hear Justin Timberlake talking about, I wanna dance, 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 and jump, 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 I'm like, that's your fucking message? Turn it off. No. But is it groovy? I don't care if it's groovy. Your hook is, I wanna dance, dance all night long, and jump, 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 get away. I have time for that. All right, so in your entire history of uh, of doing stunts, without naming where it was or anything like that, what was the what was the stunt that you're like that is my when I when I pass away, I want people to be like, man, Margera, comma, the guy that did fill in the blank stunt. Actually, the most proud thing I am is which is a stunt in itself and also a really gnarly skate trick is Tony Hawk built a loop one time. It was 20 feet tall. And um, he tried it, he knocked himself out, he built it again, tried it again, couldn't do it. And finally, when he landed it, he showed professional skateboarders that it's possible. So um, I tried it for the first time in Orlando, Florida on Jackass. Almost did it into the pad, so when I took the pad away, I knocked myself out. Then I tried it at Bob Burnquist again uh, two years later, knocked myself out there. And then I went to Phoenix, Arizona on the Boom Boom Hot Jam, Tony Hawk. And he built another one, and then I give advice from all these people. Bob Burnquist gave me the best advice ever. He goes, look, when you roll down the transition, lock your knees, and when you hit the transition, just look at 12 o'clock, lock your knees, and just follow the stickers. So I did that, and I did it first fucking try, after trying it for many years, over and over and over again. I just dropped it, followed his advice, and did it first try. So I was the 13th person to ever do that on a skateboard, which, you know, there's a lot of pro skateboarders that aren't brave enough to try it. So I'm pretty stoked on that being a skate trick and a stunt and not something goofy like, you know, jumping off of a roof into a bricker bush, you know? So basically we all thought that like, that was only possible with our Hot Wheels cars when we were younger. You know, but you actually were the, the, the real life Hot Wheels car in that respect. Yeah, and believe it or not, the bigger it is, the easier it is. So if, if you do a huge one, it looks gnarly, but the gnarly ones are the small ones. Like if somebody was just like, you gotta really know how to, cause, cause it's not like doing a backflip, it's more like pausing your body and, and holding it. It's not doing a backflip, but the smaller it gets, the more of a backflip it, it becomes. So is there anybody that you have not worked with, whether it's in television, whether it's a skater, somebody you haven't worked with, that's showing, like, man, I need to reach out to that person, I gotta find a way to work with that person. The people that I like to work with are like, you know, no-name bands that, that nobody's heard of yet because I want to promote them and make them big. But, um, you know, I had Iggy Pop play at my wedding and uh, I was pretty starstruck on that and having dinner with him. And when we were filming Jackass, uh, they said, um, 
somebody's gonna show up, they never said who, so when I answered the door, it was Brad Pitt. I was like, what? Who was fucking Brad Pitt today? So I got Brad tattooed on my pit after we were done filming. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't really get starstruck too much. I don't know. I mean, it be a starstruck thing. It might just be a, you know, that person seems like they'd be a cool person to collaborate with. Clearly, clearly, we know you want to work with Justin Bieber after what you just said just a minute ago. <laughs> no, that's Justin Timberlake. I actually am friends with Justin Bieber. <laughs> he skates. He, he's a cool kid. But, um... Funny story, I, at, when I went to the 2000 VMA Awards, I was uh, presenting an award to Eminem. When I was done, the singer Pink comes up to me, she goes, do you know who I am? And I'm like, really weirded out, I'm like, oh uh, yeah, you're the singer Pink. She's like, I'm Alicia with the green hair, we skated together when we were 13 in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, at Cheap Skates. I'm like, what, what, that's you? She's like, you didn't put two and two together? I'm like, I didn't know you were from Pennsylvania, I didn't even know you skated. So I've been skating with pink since I was 13. Look, you said pink hair now, you got green hair then, how am I supposed to know the difference? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's pretty incredible. All right, so does anybody have any other questions? We're about to wrap this thing up. Uh, we'll give you a chance to get one more, if you want, maybe two more. But if not, then we're just going to keep hanging out up here. I actually got to get to the Tampa Pro, I'm judging. You're judging at the Tampa Pro? Starts at 3, three o'clock sharp, so I got to get there. Oh, wow. All right, so you know what then? For that, for that being the case, let's uh, let's wrap this thing up. I wonder where, uh, where our boy Corey is at. Do you guys want to uh, give us the little Corey chant? Let's be nice, coolish, cool. See, I got his name right today. And uh, hopefully he comes back here so we can get a picture. If not, we'll do it on my phone. But uh, real quick, you guys, these conventions are all about having fun and talking about our fandoms and all that. But in a real-world scenario, real world, isn't it good to actually have Bam up here, not be in that Florida shuffle, to be here with us? Because we want Bam to be around. Let's get this picture for us and we'll get this thing done.